scientists have confirmed the existence of 891 moons in our solar system. Not planets, moons. And while they're all beautiful from a distance, up close, they're not just hostile to human life. They're incredibly creative about it. They have unique landscapes, bizarre weather, and their own unique ways to kill you. So, what if we could take a tour of the most famous ones? What would it actually be like to stand on their surfaces? And more importantly, what would be the last thing you ever experienced? Let's find out. Our first stop is Saturn's largest moon, Titan. It's the most Earth-like moon we've found, with a major twist. Its rivers, lakes, and rain are all liquid methane. The atmosphere is a thick orange smog with the pressure so high it feels like you're permanently underwater. You step into a hazy twilight world where the ground is slushy ice and the air is a frigid minus 179 degrees Celsius. Drawn to a dark still lake you get too close. The shore isn't solid. It gives way and you plunge into the oily liquid. The cold is so absolute you don't have time to panic. You're flash frozen solid in less than a second. A statue sinking into an alien lake. It's a bizarrely beautiful end. Unless your suit sparks. In that case, the flammable atmosphere ignites and you go up in a single silent fireball. Rating 9 out of 10. Oddly peaceful, as long as you don't accidentally ignite the entire moon. Sticking with Saturn, our next stop is Enceladus. This moon is tiny. You could drive across its entire surface in an afternoon. It's a beautiful, bright white ball of ice and one of the coldest places in the solar system at minus 200 degrees Celsius. But underneath all that ice, Enceladus is hiding a secret, a massive liquid water ocean, kept warm by the constant gravitational squeezing from Saturn, and sometimes that ocean bursts through the surface. You're walking near the moon's south pole, exploring a series of long bluish cracks in the ice that scientists call tiger stripes. You feel a low rumble through the soles of your boot. Suddenly, the ground beneath you explodes. One of its famous cryovolcanoes erupts, blasting a massive geyser of ice crystals and water vapor directly into space, with you riding right in the middle of it. The force is unbelievable, launching you kilometers above the surface. For a moment, the view is spectacular. But the gas in the plume isn't just water. It's mixed with things like hydrogen cyanide. Your suit alarms go crazy as the toxic gas floods your systems. You'd suffocate quietly, tumbling in the silent vacuum. Then the moon's gentle gravity would start to pull you back down. It would be a long, slow fall ending in a final, shattering impact on the ice you just left. Rating 4 out of 10. You get to ride a geyser into space, which is cool right up until the part where you suffocate and fall back down. All right, prepare yourself, because our next stop, Io, is the most chaotic, violent place in the solar system. It's constantly being squeezed, stretched, and pummeled by Jupiter's immense gravity, and all that energy has to go somewhere. The result? Io is covered in over 400 active volcanoes that are erupting constantly. The surface is a sickening yellow and orange, coated in sulfur. The thin atmosphere is poisonous sulfur dioxide. It smells like a billion rotten eggs. The moment you land, you know you've made a terrible mistake. The ground is constantly shaking. In every direction, you see plumes of volcanic gas rising into the sky. You take a single step and a nearby volcano lets out a roar, shooting a fountain of molten lava hundreds of kilometers into space. A wave of lava burning at 1,200 degrees Celsius rushes towards you. There's no time to run, no time to think. You're just gone instantly consumed by a wave of liquid rock and sulfur. Frankly, that's a mercy, because if the lava somehow missed you, you're still sitting in the middle of Jupiter's most intense radiation belt. The invisible radiation would flood your body, giving you a lethal dose in minutes. It'd be a truly miserable way to go. Rating, 0 out of 10. A quick death, but a deeply unpleasant one. Smells awful, too. Also orbiting Jupiter is Europa and it couldn't be more different from Io. It's calm, clean, and beautiful. The entire moon is covered in a thick shell of water ice, maybe 20 kilometers deep, and underneath that ice is a vast, dark ocean. It's one of the most promising places to look for alien life. 
For us, though, it's just another beautiful trap. You're walking across one of Europa's vast ice plains. The surface is crisscrossed with long, reddish cracks. It's eerily quiet. Above you, the giant, swirling face of Jupiter fills half the sky. It's one of the most incredible views imaginable. You're so focused on the view, you don't even notice the faint groan from the ice beneath you. A massive crack splits open, and you're swallowed into darkness. You're now in free fall inside the moon's ice shell. You might freeze solid before you even hit the bottom. Or you might just get unlucky enough to fall all the way through, into the hidden ocean below. The second you hit the water, the pressure would be unbelievable. Many times greater than the deepest parts of our own oceans. Your suit and your body would be crushed in an instant, like a styrofoam cup squeezed in a fist. Rating 7 out of 10. The view is to die for. Unfortunately, you will. Way out in the deep, dark, orbiting Neptune is Triton. This is one of the coldest places imaginable. At minus 232 degrees Celsius, it's cold enough for the nitrogen in this thin atmosphere to freeze solid and fall as snow. The sun is so far away that it looks like a very bright star, casting the whole moon in a permanent ghostly twilight. You step out onto a plane of frozen nitrogen. The silence is profound. Your breath doesn't fog, it instantly freezes into a fine dust that drifts to the ground. You look at your hand and you see a layer of frost already forming on your glove. The nitrogen in the air is freezing directly to your helmet, slowly turning your visor opaque. You try to move, but your limbs feel stiff. The cold isn't just on you, it's getting in you. Your joints begin to freeze. Your blood turns to slush. It doesn't even hurt, it just feels slow. You lose your balance and fall over. In the low gravity, it's a slow, gentle tumble. But the moment you hit the ground, your body, now completely frozen and brittle, simply shatters like fine china. Rating, 1 out of 10. A quiet, almost elegant death. But still, you know, death. Back to Jupiter, to visit the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede. This moon is bigger than the planet Mercury. It's so big, it actually has its own magnetic field. You'd think that it would make it a safer bet. But you'd be wrong. It's still stuck deep inside Jupiter's powerful radiation belts. You step out and the scale of the place is stunning. But you quickly realize something is wrong. The electronics in your suit are starting to fizz and crackle. Your radio is just static. Your helmet display flickers and dies. The danger here is invisible. You can't see the high energy particles from Jupiter, but they are tearing through you. You feel a strange warmth, a tingling in your skin. Then it becomes a burn like the worst sunburn you've ever had. But it's happening all over your body at once, from the inside out. It's a silent, awful, and thankfully quick end. Rating 1 out of 10. You don't get blown up or frozen, you just get quietly cooked by radiation you can't even see. Now before we continue, I want to talk about a service I use to get smart, in-depth summaries of complex topics. Short form. Shortform doesn't just summarize books, they analyze them. While most summary apps are brief, AI-generated overviews that only cover what's on the surface, Shortform's team of writers and editors expertly crafts deep guides to the most popular nonfiction titles. Their guides go way beyond a 10-minute overview, with a one-pager of the entire book, chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdowns, and smart insights and commentary that connect ideas, provide counterpoints, and include updates from recent works. To help you learn, they even include exercises after each chapter and offer both PDF and audio versions. And Shortform goes beyond just books. The service also includes master guides that compile books on a particular subject, article guides, and even podcast guides. Plus, their browser extension can summarize anything on the internet, from articles and emails to YouTube videos with just one click. It's one of the best ways to get comprehensive knowledge fast. If you want to check out those books you've been meaning to read and get smart summaries of anything online, you can get a free trial plus three months free by signing up for the annual subscription at shortform.com slash stay curious. That's three months completely free when you use my link. Okay, now back to it. Our last stop at Jupiter is Callisto. This moon is one of the oldest, most unchanged surfaces we've ever seen. It's absolutely covered in craters. 
The reason it's so well preserved is because nothing ever happens there. There's no weather, no volcanoes, and no atmosphere to protect it. It has just been silently floating in space for 4 billion years, getting hit by things. You're walking through a graveyard of ancient craters. It's peaceful, in a desolate kind of way, and you feel like you're the first living thing to ever stand here. And then, in an instant, you're not. A tiny piece of rock, no bigger than a grain of sand, is moving through space at 50,000 kilometers per hour. With no atmosphere to burn it up, it hits your helmet with more energy than a rifle bullet. There's no sound, no warning. One moment you're looking at the stars and the next, it's just over. The universe just randomly decided your time was up. Rating 2 out of 10. Endless stretches of boredom punctuated by instantaneous random death. So there you have it. From fiery explosions to silent frozen ends. The world and our solar system have no shortage of ways to remind us how special this one is. It really makes you appreciate the air you're breathing, the ground under your feet, and the simple fact that our planet isn't actively trying to kill us every second of the day.